welcome students to the online lecture of digital logic design in the today's lecture we will be uh, discussing the exclusive or function uh, in the previous uh, lecture we discussed the NAND and NOR based uh, implementation in the current lecture we will be focusing on the exclusive or and the exclusive NOR operations uh, we have already discussed uh, this topic a little bit uh, in the previous uh, chapters uh, now we will be discussing this in uh, more detail uh, if you uh, remember the truth uh, table for the exclusive or function say if we have x y two inputs uh, it will produce one when both of the inputs are different so this was the exclusive or table generally we represent it as using uh, this special sign a plus sign enclosed in a uh, circle so there are uh, many other properties of exclusive or which we will see in uh, uh, this lecture uh, one very similar uh, function to the exclusive or is the exclusive nor operation you can say it's the complement of the exclusive or uh, function uh, the exclusive or function is generally represented in a form of uh, this uh, uh, logical expression uh, we usually express it as, uh, express it as xy complement plus uh, x complement uh, y uh, this is this gave us the exclusive or operation and if we want to take the complement of it or do we want to take the exclusive nor then we take just the complement of it which will result in uh, this one uh, there are some uh, identities uh, which are related to the exclusive or uh, operation uh, we will be utilizing some of them uh, in the current lecture and uh, we will be utilizing them in the future. Uh, say if, if we exclusive or any uh, variable or any input with zero, it will uh, return the same uh, variable x. If we exclusive or any uh, variable with one, then it will represent its complement. Uh, if the two same numbers are exclusive or, uh, then their result uh, would always be equal to zero. Uh, if exclusive or with its complement then that would result in one and uh, uh, similarly if we exclusive or with the other complement then that is equivalent to a whole complement of exclusive or term and similarly the last one here same too uh, you can always prove the, these identities uh, through the truth table method and uh, you can easily prove all of them uh, then there are any other properties uh, uh, which are related to the exclusive or uh, first is that a uh, exclusive or is commutative it means that if you change uh, the variables position then it will not affect the output uh, it means that a exclusive or b is same as b exclusive or a so changing their uh, position doesn't affect the output and the third uh, third is that it's associative to associative means that if we have a three variable uh, exclusive or function and then in that case if we take the exclusive of the first two or if we take the exclusive of the last two it is equivalent both of them are equivalent and if you remember that uh, these two conditions are used uh, when we want to represent any given gate in a form of uh, say more than two inputs so because uh, the exclusive or operation obeys these uh, two two conditions the commutative and the associative uh, law so it means that it can be extended to three or four or multiple input system uh, we can uh, represent this exclusive or operation in form of the and or representation which we discussed in the last uh, lecture or using the NAND gate representation uh, this is the main equation of the exclusive or if you just uh, represent it uh, in a form of uh, this boolean expressing using the and and or gate simple uh, then it is quite easy you can see that both of these terms are ended and they are odd with these terms so uh, we just first take the complement of x and the complement of y we fed it to the two and gates here and then the result is odd so it's quite simple if we want to represent uh, this uh, using the nand gate we can also do that uh, we have uh, studied the methods that how we can represent uh, and a given uh, boolean expression in terms of the uh, NAND gate uh, representation uh, for the NAND gate uh, representation if you uh, see that uh, for this gate the output of 
uh, this gate is basically equal to x y whole complement uh, which is from the de morgan's law is equal to x complement plus y complement so the rest is the, is the same uh, we will get the x complements here and uh, rest function remains uh, the, the same with the nand gate so in this way we represent uh, this function with the in nand gates and now we will be uh, discussing the the odd functions uh, we can uh, see that from the uh, uh, representation of the exclusive or in terms of three variable system uh, that uh, the exclusive or expression for a three variable system is like uh, this one this expression will represent uh, the exclusive or operation in this one and if we represent uh, this in form of a k map uh, then we would have uh, values at a uh, min term 1 2 4 and 7 and if you uh, calculate the number of ones at the input of time means say for this one there is only one one in the input for the second uh, main term there is again only one uh, value of one here for the fourth one again then there is a, a one one here for the last one there are three ones here so it means that uh, when we represent an exclusive or operation uh, in terms of a main term or a k map we can clearly see that this represents an odd function meaning that at least one of the variable should be equal to one or all three variables should be one or we can say that the total number of ones in the input uh, must be equal to the odd so basically this is the next uh, definition or the more precise definition of the exclusive or operation uh, so far we have discussed it as a two variable system and in the two variable system uh, we mentioned that the exclusive or operation is uh, gives us the output of one when we have different values uh, but actually this is not the case uh, actual definition of uh, the exclusive or operation is that uh, it will uh, give us the value of one when it have odd number of ones in the input so whenever it has odd number of ones in the input it will always give the output equal to one so that's why the exclusive or operation is also known as the odd function uh, similarly uh, its complement uh, would be equal to the even uh, function say if we take the exclusive uh, norm one then that we will say that that is an even uh, function because the number of uh, ones here for each min term are equal to one uh, we are also including the all zeros here too in it so this way we define the odd and the even function the basic exclusive or represents an odd function because it must have odd number of ones in the input uh, while uh, the exclusive nor operation represents an even function Uh, say we want to represent uh, uh, in the form of circuit diagram uh, we would represent an odd function like this uh, we have uh, two cascaded exclusive or operation uh, because uh, generally it is not preferred to use a three a input uh, exclusive or, or it is uh, quite difficult to fabricate a three input exclusive or uh, gate or the exclusive nor gate uh, even uh, these two input exclusive OR gates are mostly fabricated using the AND OR uh, gates. So if we want to represent uh, say odd and even functions, uh, we can easily represent them like this. We have, uh, have two uh, cascaded uh, exclusive OR gates, then that would give us uh, the odd function. Uh, while if we invert the last gate, that, that would give us the even function or the exclusive NOR operation. Now, if we extend it to the four in input uh, system uh, from three to four, uh, then the same definition holds for the odd function and the even function. And because if you expand it uh, using uh, this expression, uh, then uh, you can see that uh, we have one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. You can see that uh, the total number of uh, ones uh, that should be in an input is must be odd number. Only one one is here because both of them are zero here. Similarly, for here we have only one in the input, rest of our zero. So odd number of one is similarly for the all these terms. 
and if you uh, look at this uh, four variable k map and the three carrier, uh, variable k map which we discussed a few slides back as you can see that for the exclusive or operation uh, there is no minimization could be achieved using the k map uh, for even for this one you can see that there are not two adjacent ones that could be combined to minimize this function so this is also a property of the exclusive uh, or uh, function here that there are no ones adjacent that could be uh, combined uh, similarly, if we look at the even uh, function, uh, then uh, we have one here, we have one here. So if you look at here, there are even number of ones here, one, one. For this, we have one here, one here, again, even number of ones. So uh, for the four variable system, the same things follow that uh, to be function of uh, having a value of one, then it inputs must have an odd number of ones to be an odd function and it inputs must have an even number of ones if it is had to be an even function. We can always uh, represent or uh, prove this through the truth table too. Now we will be utilizing this exclusive or uh, gates uh, in an other example. Uh, we have discussed a little bit about the parity check in the first chapter we discussed that how we can use the even parity concept and the odd uh, uh, parity concept. Uh, in the even uh, parity, we have said that uh, the even parity value goes to one if it has, we have to make the total number of ones even in it. So uh, if you see that this pr process is similar to representing uh, this using uh, exclusive OR gates. So if we have a three input exclusive OR gate, say X, Y, Z, uh, then it result will always be same as that of the parity. So you can again check it back from the chapter one that uh, if we have to generate a parity or even parity, then we can just utilize the exclusive or gates. Uh, if you have X, Y, Z as three exclusive or gates, then parity value would be always be uh, selected depending upon uh, the representation uh, because its output would be always be equal to one for the odd number of uh, once so uh, one will be produced when it has odd number of ones uh, similarly if we want to extend it uh, for the case of say four input system uh, then in that case for the four input uh, system uh, we would have an other uh, exclusive or gate added to in it and the process uh, remains uh, the same uh, what we will do is that at the transmitter end basically you can say that this is the transmitter end and this is the receiver end. Uh, we generated a parity from here and then we transferred uh, this uh, values of x, y, z and the parity to the uh, uh, through some medium uh, to the receiver end and in the receiver end what we will do is we will check that uh, what is the parity correct or not. Uh, we will again for the checking purpose we will again uh, use the exclusive or operation. Uh, because uh, it will uh, this value of C will tell us that whether we have received the correct bits uh, or uh, not. If value of C is equal to 1, uh, then uh, it means that some error has occurred. Uh, let me explain it through uh, this uh, table. Say this is the uh, receive, uh, transmitter end. And in the transmitter end, uh, we have three bits X, Y, Z. Uh, we use the exclusive or operation for parity generator, even parity generator. And we know that uh, for the, there is odd number of one here. So its parity value is equal to one. Similarly, odd number of one here. So its value is equal to one. This is even, so we have zero here. So in the same way, we have uh, calculated the whole of the table. This is the transmitter side. Now when we will send the data, we will send uh, four things, X, Y, Z and P, the parity bit. And on the receiver end, we will check that whether we have received the correct data or not. Say at the uh, receiver end, if you see that, uh, for the receiver end, uh, we have the fourth one. So we will be using the four input exclusive or uh, gate, or we can use that two, two inputs uh, in my cascaded form. So we will be using the exclusive or uh, gates again to verify that whether our, our result is correct or not. Uh, so how we can calculate that whether our result is correct or not. Uh, when we will get a zero at C, then that would be corresponding to a, a correct uh, result. Uh, because if you look at this, 
in this case uh, we would have uh, uh, it would be producing uh, the value of c would be producing the value of 0 which is correct uh, but in this case if we have all the inputs equal to 0 and then the parity is equal to 1 then because overall combination would become odd so that would produce a value of 1 and this one is actually indicating that there is some error in the uh, transmission uh, because if all the values of x, y, z are all zeros, uh, then that uh, this parity value should have been uh, zero. But this value is equal to uh, one, so it means uh, that there is some error in the transmission. And similarly, in the same way, we will be calculating all the uh, other terms that are involved in it. Whenever we will have a one at the uh, one, whenever we will have a one at the output, this could be indicating an error and while when we have a zero then that would be indicating that our result is parity check is okay it, it, we have received the bits uh, properly we have seen the one example here you can similarly check uh, the same with the other one because if you see check here for this one then in this case uh, for x y z there are odd number of ones here so for that case the parity should have been equal to one but its value is zero it means there has been some transmission error uh, because of this uh, uh, value is changed so in this case uh, when the parity check uh, it will pass through the parity check it will produce a value of one because of the odd number of one uh, so that's why it, there is an error here uh, but if it is uh, trans, uh, transmitted correctly, like say in this one, 0, 1, 0, then that would have an parity equal bit equal to 1 and that would have resulted in uh, the C value equal to 0. So that would have been a correct result. Uh, so in this uh, way, we use the exclusive OR gates for the uh, parity generation. Uh, we have used uh, two uh, different uh, circuits for uh, uh, this uh, uh, purpose uh, we have used the in the few last slides uh, let me go back yes this one uh, if you see that uh, we have used uh, two different circuits uh, the first one is at the transmitter end and its purpose is to generate the parity while at the receiver end uh, what we have is uh, we have a four bit even parity checker uh, because uh, there is an extra bit here or result of this one so we can compare it uh, to check whether result or not uh, we can use, uh, use a slight modification in it uh, to change uh, uh, change uh, its circuit because if you let say for the transmitter uh, uh, transmitter section if we use the same hardware and we put this p equal to 0 or connect this p equal to 0 uh, then you know that because of the uh, uh, identities that we have followed that that this would become So it will have no change. So if we, we set this value equal to zero, then the same hardware could be used on the transmitter and then the same hardware could be used on the uh, uh, receiver end too. So uh, one hardware could be used for both of them. We don't have to use the separate three bit and uh, at the receive transmitter end and the four bit at the receiver end. Uh, we can use a single hardware of this for both parity generator and the parity checker. Uh, can you do read uh, these pages from the book for uh, better understanding? Uh, hopefully, we will be uh, starting with the combinational uh, logic and important part of your course from the uh, next lecture. Thank you.